Welcome back guys. Chem 110B Chapter 12. We're doing redox reactions, electron exchange. So we're looking at the first simple section from page 189 through 193, exercises A and B, and we're going to show you two different methods. The first one we'll call the arrow method. Now these are the simple redox balancing reaction problems. Alright, so remember everything must be balanced. That means the atoms have to be balanced, the charges has to be balanced, and the electrons lost and gained must be balanced. We have a methodology by which we do that. And this is the basic methodology. Okay? So real fast, and your job is to understand each one of these steps and be able to do them on your own. Assign the charges. We'll talk about what the charges means uh, in specific later, but for now it's pretty obvious what the charges are in these simple problems. Then we draw arrows between the atoms that are changing that charge, and then the step that everybody forgets, which is why we put stars around it, we do a temporary balance of the atoms that have arrows attached, and then we finally get to the part that's the business end of this, which is find out the electrons lost, the electrons gain, and then balance them. Then after you get that business done, it's all about getting the reactant coefficients, which allows you to balance the rest very easily. So we rewrite, showing just the ion charges and the reactant coefficients, and then we balance by inspection. So here are the three uh, problems that we'll give a go at. A, B, and C. Copper plus Al plus 3 goes to copper plus 2 plus Al. B is Fe plus Cl2 goes to Fe plus 2 plus Cl minus 1. And then we got N2 plus Ca goes to Ca plus 2 plus N minus 3. Okay, so hit pause. Be able to do those steps on your own. You could cover up the steps even. Maybe I should cover up the steps and make you guys do it without. Alright, do it that way. Alright. Let's cover it up. There, that's better. Alright, covered it up. Hit pause. See if you can balance it on your own. Then come back and we'll see what the story is on whether or not you did it right. By the way, when you're done, even though you may or may not be able to get it balanced, you should be able to know for sure if it's balanced because it's real easy to check to see if the atoms, charge, and electrons lost and gained are all balanced. Okay, hit pause, give it your best shot. All right, you're back. So let's try it. Let's go. You know first by assigning charges that uh, copper by itself is an atom and iron by itself is the charge on the iron. Okay, so now let's draw our arrows. The, let's see, let's draw it like this. The copper goes like that and the aluminum goes like that because it's clear that the copper turns into copper and the aluminum turns into aluminum. So what happens? Well, what's the next step? Because we drew our arrows between the atoms that are changing. Now we have to temporarily balance. We've got one copper for every one copper. One aluminum for every one aluminum. That makes things easy for that temporary balance. So now let's see what's happening. We've got one copper that starts off as zero. So that's a total of zero. And then we've got one copper that starts off as a plus two, so that's a total of plus two. When we get from zero to plus two, what happened? Well, knowing that every electron is a minus one charge, you can see that, electrons a minus one charge. When you get more positive, that means you lost electrons. How many? Lost two electrons. Makes sense, right? Zero to plus two means you lost two electrons, ended up being two more positive. So what happens when we go from one Al that is a plus three, which adds up to a total of plus three, and one Al that's a zero, adds up to zero. How do you get from plus three to zero? Well, you got more negative, right? From all the way up to plus three, all the way down to zero. That means you gained three electrons. Good. Okay. So, 
to turn the Al plus 3s into Al zeros, you have to gain 3 electrons. To turn the Cl zeros into, or Cu zeros into Cu plus 2s, you have to lose 2. So how do you get these electrons lost and gained to be balanced? Well, you have to find the least common multiple. And the least common multiple here, I think it's obvious, is 6, right? I'm making these big and heavy, so you recognize that that's a total of minus 6 electrons, and this is a total of plus 6 electrons. The only way you can gain 6 electrons 3 at a time is if 2 of these aluminums gain 3 at a time. And how do you end up losing a total of 6 electrons. Notice that 6 electrons gained balances out with 6 electrons lost. That 3 comes up here. Think about it. If you're going to give up a total of 6 electrons 2 at a time, you need 3 coppers 2 at a time to give up a total of 6. Okay, so we have the 6 electrons lost and gained balanced out. So, all of this mess that we have here, all these charges and lines and everything, is all to get that 3 times 1 and that 2 times 1. That's the key. So what we want to do, finally, is rewrite 3 coppers plus 2 Al plus 3s go to, I'm not sure how many copper plus 2s, I'm not sure how many ALs. Okay? That's why we wrote just the reactant coefficients and just the charges on the ions. So now, if there's balancing by inspection, three coppers, that has to be a three. Two aluminums, that has to be a two. Do the charges balance out? Well, sure they do. This is zero, three times zero. This is two times plus three. So that adds up to a plus 6. This is 3 times plus 2, which is plus 6. Plus 2 times 0. So this is a plus 6. That balances out. And that's our balanced equation. Pretty simple. All right, let's try the next one. And this next one, actually the next two are important because of that step 3. Let's let the spider live elsewhere for a second. All right, watch how fast we can do this. Charges atom by itself is zero. Compound by itself is zero. Plus two and minus one. The ions turn into iron ions. The chlorines turn into chloride ions. That's step one and step two. Step three, temporary balance of atoms with arrows. There's one iron here and one iron here, so that's a 1 to 1 ratio. But look at this. There's two chlorines. There's two chlorines here, right? Two chlorines. So if there's one of these, there's two. That means there has to be two chlorines on this side. Two chlorines on this side, two chlorines on that side. That becomes important, that temporary balance, when we do the next step, electrons lost and gained. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times plus 2 is plus 2. To get from 0 to plus 2, what are we doing? We're losing 2 electrons, getting more positive, losing the negatives. Okay, that one's easy. That's the same ratios that we did here for all these one-to-one -one ratios, but check it out. There's two chlorines on this side, right? Two chlorines, each of which is zero. So there's a total of zero here, but there are two chlorines, each of which is a minus one, right? Or a total of minus two. If you looked at this and you said, 0 to minus 1, 
you would just be taking care of one chlorine at a time. Looking at just the chlorine, can you see where it might also look like this? We've got to turn all these chlorines that are zeros into two CLs that are minus one charges. That chlorine has to add one electron, and that chlorine has to add one electron. So that's a total of two electrons added. When you go from zero to minus two, you're going to gain two electrons. You with me? That's a big key here. And you don't get that if you don't temporarily balance. So with two electrons lost and two electrons gained, that's a one-to-one -one ratio. So one comes down here. One comes up here to the end of the arrow. And now that we have these two coefficients, the rest should be pretty simple. We rewrite showing 1Fe plus 1Cl2 goes to I'm not sure how many Fe plus 2s and I'm not sure how many Cl minus 1s. If we have 1 Fe, we have 1 Fe. If we have 2 chlorines, we need 2 chlorines. And the charges balance out 0 and 0, right? Plus 2, 2 times minus 1, so that evens out. Yes, I know that it should be pretty easy for you to just look at these and figure out how to balance. But your job is to get good at these steps because we're going to run into problems that are a lot more complicated. All right, let's try one more. Zero charge, zero charge, plus two and minus three. Good. Now let's draw our arrows. Let's do the calciums right here. Let's do the nitrogens down here. Okay, the nitrogens turn into nitrides, and the calciums turn into calcium plus twos. Temporary balance says if there's one of these, there has to be two of those. If there's one of these, there has to be one of those. Okay, one times zero is a total of zero from that calcium. And then a 1 times plus 2 gives a total of plus 2 here. 0 to plus 2, we've seen that a bunch of times. We've lost 2 electrons. Lost 2 electrons. Okay, good. Lost 2 to get from 1 calcium 0 to 1 calcium plus 2. What's going on here? We've got 2 nitrogens, both of which are 0 or a total of zero. We've got two nitrogens, both of which are minus three, which is a total of minus six. To get from zero to minus six, we have to gain six electrons. If we're losing two and we're gaining six, what's the fact we have to multiply up here and the fact we have to multiply down here so that the electrons lost and gained are equal. What's the least common multiple between these two? It's six. One. Three. This three jumps down to the very end of the arrow. This one jumps up here to the very end of that arrow. If when you were doing this problem, you said this was a three electron exchange, you weren't doing the temporary balance and thinking about it. Thinking about the fact that if we have two nitrogens that are zero, and we have to change them into two nitrogens that are minus three, it takes three electrons per nitrogen or a total of six. So, rewriting, we've got one and two plus three CA's on this side. I don't know how many CA plus twos. I don't know how many N minus threes. Okay. If there's two
two nitrogens on this side, we need two here. If there's three calciums, we need three here. And everything balances out. Zero charge total. And zero charge total here. This is the ballast equation. Okay. This is the arrow method for the simple problems. It's an important tool. You need to be able to go, be good at it, use it, and know these six steps off by heart. Practice up. Be good at it. If you don't like this method at all, try the next video. Alright, practice up. Good luck.